Well, good evening. Welcome to this uh, special Monday Thursday service. Uh, I know um, the rain, it was a little bit maybe touchy whether or not you might make it, but I'm glad you're here tonight. Uh, before our uh, invocation, I do want to just offer a few words of sort of direction and housekeeping if you've not done this with us before. Uh, at the time when we come to, for foot washing or feet washing, uh, you are invited to come. There are four chairs here at the front. You can take a, a seat in whichever one is empty, and uh, usually there will be a line. And someone behind you will, will wash your feet, and then you'll in turn wash the feet of the person behind you. When that time comes, you feel free to offer one or both feet. Um, I usually before now would say something like, you know, don't wear clingy socks. I learned that the hard way one time, but, but you'll come and remove your socks, your shoes, and have your feet washed and dried with the towels that are here in front. Uh, unless you just feel led, you don't have to scrub the person's foot, just a light little pouring of water and then a drying, and then we, we continue on through the line that way. Then you'll find yourself, find your way back to your seat. When it comes time for communion tonight, we'll be taking communion by intinction, which means you'll come forward and receive a piece of bread, dip it in the cup, take it, and then again find your way back to your seat. So we'll, um, and those times come, you'll just be aware of that. If you forget it, don't worry, it's okay. We're all amateurs at this thing called faith anyway. So um, as we come together on this special evening, let us begin uh, with a word of prayer. Holy God, on this most special evening of Holy Week, when we come together to remember the night you spent with your disciples, the commandment you gave them to love one another just as you have loved us. Lord, as we remember and commemorate that time when you gathered and washed their feet in an act of service and love, you call us, Lord, to wash one another's feet in acts of service and love. As we were reminded of the last supper you shared with them, a supper or that symbolized the great love and the great act of love you would make for all of us. We gather together again tonight, God, to remember that supper and that great act of love. So Lord, on this evening, when we recall that supper, when we recall the act of betrayal that would lead Lord, lead to that dark day of crucifixion. Lord, we ask for your spirit to be here with us, to speak to us in these acts we share together, the songs that we sing, the things that we see, the words we hear, the things we feel, taste, and touch, that you speak to us, God, and show us more of who you are, and more of who you call us to be. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes that it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Matthew 26, 20 through 29. What a wonderful 
prayer we find at 394 in my life and in my song and in my church uh, our prayer is that the Lord is glorified so let's uh, we can remain seated but let's sing that wonderful chorus 394 sing it from your heart okay Psalm 51, 7. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Can we stand as we sing this wonderful hymn of the faith? <clears throat> Lord Jesus, I long to be perfectly whole. I want be forever to live in my soul. Break Hear now these words from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 17. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. 
Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but it is entirely clean. And you were clean, though not all of you, for he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you were clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, we will enter into a time of prayer. Time to for prayers of confession. For God's love for the world has been revealed in Jesus Christ, who certainly loved us to the uttermost. Jesus, Savior and Lord, who at his last meal with his disciples gave them and us that new and greatest of all commandments. Love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. On this night, Christ gave this commandment to his disciples, to us. And now, as we come to a time of confession, may we pray and offer to God our confession when we have failed to show the world whose we are. May we pray and confess to Christ our sins and our failures. And as we pray, I will offer us a word of prayer together, then offer an assurance of forgiveness. So let's spend some time now in quiet prayer, and then I will lead us in a word together. Merciful God, we confess. We confess our sins to you, our failures to you. We confess, God, that sometimes we do things we know we ought not to do. And what may be worse, God, we don't do things we know we ought to do. We confess those to you now. We confess that so often our discipleship, our following Christ has been weak. And so, Lord, when we have failed to serve as Jesus served us, God, forgive us. Lord, we know and recognize on this evening that you have called us to love one another as you have loved us. And it's by that love, not by anything else, God. No confession, no knowledge, no creed, no statement, no, no identity, except for love that the world will know that we are yours. And so, God, tonight when we have failed to love one another as Jesus loves us, God, we pray you forgive us. When we have been happy, Lord, to proclaim our devotion to Jesus with our lips, but deny him by our actions and inactions. God, we pray you forgive us. Merciful God, empower us by your Holy Spirit to be steady and true to you in every time of trial, with every breath that we take to move in this world. 
Lord, give us your Holy Spirit and give us the strength to be the people you call us to be. Merciful God, forgive us of our sins, we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The good news for us, therefore, is this. In Christ Jesus, we are loved and we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. At this time, you are invited to come. Come to have your feet washed and to wash the feet of others. Come here where the chairs are ready. Come when you're ready and when God calls you.
Amen. 323. You can remain seated. Let us break bread together.
Would you stand? M80. M80. I love you, Lord. Let's lift our voice as we worship him, okay? in the choir and you can stay around for about 15 minutes come join us up in the loft we're going to run over a few songs okay thank you <laughs> 